This episode of Doc Talk is brought to you by First Bank. We're not just your neighborhood bank, we're your neighbors. Our local team lives up to the name, putting our customers and community first. To experience First Bank difference, stop by any of our 13 Knoxville area locations or visit firstbankonline.com. First Bank, member FDIC. Hi, welcome. Welcome to Doc Talks. As you remember, Doc Talks is the podcast put out by the Knoxville Academy of Medicine where we talk about issues in medicine in plain language. I am so glad that you're here to join us today. I'm Elise Denaney, former president of the Knoxville Academy of Medicine, and I have a very, very good friend and colleague and really smart person <laughs> joining us today. This is Dr. Dr. Debbie Christensen, who is the director for behavioral health development over at East Tennessee Children's Hospital. She also serves on the Board of Medical Education at the state level, so she's well-versed both in clinical practice as well as what it takes to make a really, really good doctor. So, good morning. Welcome, friend. <laughs> How are you? I'm good. How are you today? I'm well, thank you. Did I talk? Did I, I? I'm not sure I mentioned we're talking about autism this morning. I don't think you did say that. Yeah, I was so excited that you were going to be here with us today. All right, so autism is a really, really broad topic. Very broad. Um, how about we start with just a definition? Is that too broad? No, it's not. <laughs> so, and, and in plain language, that's what you wanted. At its core, autism is a communication disorder. Okay. It's a disorder of communication. Uh, that is, um, and communication is how, how we relate to other people. And at its core, it comes about as an, as a, it's an impairment in communication because of um, difficulties in something that's called theory of mind. Okay. And theory of mind says that um, it, it's, how you th it's how you think. And also, it's more than that. It's how you think other people think. Okay. And you're not born having that it develops um, just like a lot of, well you're, you're not born having a lot of things you language develops you know, all, all these things develop and theory of mind starts to develop roughly around the age of four and continues developing probably probably entirely through our lives but but you don't really think it's well developed until up until the teen years for example um, can you put yourself in somebody else's place? One of the classic things that I'll do that a four to five year old really ought to be able to get is I have a metal box that's a, an old Band-Aid box from when I was a little girl. Remember they used to come in metal boxes and it's sitting on my desk and it's full of candy. And I will say to the child, Hey, what do you think is in this box? And there's band-aids. I mean, it's a like, meme what the Band-Aid box looks like. And yep, of course, and of course, I sure do. And of course, what do you think they say? band-aids right it's there. and I said well okay let's see what's in here and you open the box and there's candy and of course most of the time they want a piece of candy because right you get it. and so you let them have a little piece of candy and you close the box up and then you say so if we go out here and we ask your mom what she thinks is in the box what do you think your mom will say interesting interesting question because that's like so many different it's levels a lot of, of different levels yeah and so this is if, a four-year-old it's a, this is a four to five year old right? okay okay and of course you ask this to older children too but by four to five you ought to be able to start to get that a little bit so you know can you say well gee we go show it to somebody else and they look at the band-aids on there and they don't know what's in there so they're going to say band-aids can they answer band-aids or do they say candy because the classic impaired theory of mind answer is they're going to say candy because once they know there's candy in there they can't put themselves back in the position of somebody that doesn't know interesting that there's candy in there so that's if you can understand that you can understand a lot of what of what autism is about okay now there's other things that that go along with that but that's one of the major core issues and that's a real good um, screening, or it. It is. It's kind not. Of... It's not. The, I mean, it's not the only. It's not the only right. part of. Uh, but and a lot of the other uh, questions and things and c come back to kind of. Can you do that? What What do you think somebody would think about this? How do you think this person? Think? I mean, it, it all goes to that. But that's that's a. Uh, 
um, I, I guess that's more of a, a definition or an example of how that's impaired because okay. it's not you, you don't just fail that one question and all of a sudden you have autism that's not um, that's not the way it works exactly but okay um, autism is not bad though it's just it's just something we have to deal with to help our children is that correct treat attention identify intervene that kind of thing that's a tough that's a tough question I okay mean, um, it is something you have to deal with for sure right um, um, you know would you want your child to have a broken arm well no right I mean do you want your child to have to wear glasses do, do you want to right. have to wear glasses no you'd prefer right. not to I right. mean it's you know it, it, it's something that makes 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 life it makes life harder um, and you know we make a big deal about being the autism spectrum about their being yeah All I was these thinking are, about that well, I, I, I don't know everything has a spectrum I mean ear, exactly. ear infections have a spectrum is this right. a bad ear infection or is this you know and so right. and, and we and we've made this really big deal about it with autism but but everything in life does pneumonia does how well you how well you play basketball has a spectrum you know and so but but where you are on that spectrum of whatever your disease entity is does say a lot about what your chances, how much dysfunction you have, and then therefore how much dysfunction you have speaks to, you know, what, what kind of interventions you're going to have to have to, to try to be more successful, and then, um, so, um, you know, kind of what, 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 your, what, your, what your prognosis is. Okay, so if I'm... You know, the classic, I'm doing the dishes, I'm getting ready for dinner. I notice that um, <clears throat> that um, Danny is not responding to what I'm saying. There's so many different things. It could be can't hear or something. Sure, but sure. I'm worried. Right. It just, something's not right. And it seemed okay until he was three years old and just over the last two years or so, something's different. Um, so then we would think about getting tested or evaluate or evaluate much like the word test because that's okay. like you do a strep test and it's like it's yes or no and you know and and that's um you know it's, it's getting it, evaluated yeah. okay so um we would then call we get evaluated and if if you were diagnosed as being autistic um what then well, um, a, a lot of that it depends on it depends on a lot of different things. Number one, where you are in the country, because there are more services available. But we're, you know, if we're talking about you know about right here, um, and it also depends on what age you are and how much dysfunction that you have. But but basically, the the biggest um, uh, I guess the biggest things that you would want people to do. Number one is for parents to get educated about about, about what this is and what's coming. So that's that's a, that's a real important piece. Number two, it is a communication. Uh, it is a social communication uh, uh, disorder. So speech language therapy is very, very important. Um, occupational therapy is also very important um, okay. because of um, uh, the a lot of the sensory things that go along with that and then just and just again functioning in, in, in communication so occupational therapy one of the um, gold standards of therapy is applied behavioral analysis or ABA therapy um, and um, which basically takes behavior and breaks it down to very simple components and then works on improving those components. And you can do that for lots of diagnoses, but it has become uh, uh, very much uh, like associa associated, well, it'd be like building blocks, but associated with autism because it is a, a therapy that can really show some, some marked improvement for kids that have, that have autism. Um, the gold standard is at least 20 hours a week. Unfortunately, almost nobody gets that because of, of availability of providers and of, of the, the cost. Coverage. So what ends up happening uh, in the somewhat less than perfect world that we have is if you have a a, a good ABA therapist that, that works with your child, but also then trains the parents on those techniques so that they can the continue parents are, the work are, are, at are home. doing that. Yes. 
That it must be. And, and, and then the next component <laughs> there's a, you know, is, is actually what goes on in the educational system too. So there's a lot of different prongs to how folks are getting help or, and, where, or where they need to get help. Also like in the family unit. So if Danny was identified to be autistic and had an other, other, another sib, then um, would you educate that child also? To what, whatever degree was to whatever it? whatever yeah. they, they would be absolutely yeah because it would be the entire unit that would be very difficult and you know there's like everything in medicine you know we're still learning but what is difficult a lot of times is there are um, there's obviously in this uh, in this diagnosis some genetics involved and so there is a higher degree of probability that another child in the family will have some autistic traits as well so then that need to watch for it need to watch for it but it also uh, complicates you know how the family you know is able to, to to function with you know with a with a special needs child so the genetics says that autism or autism like um, disorders and I don't like the word disorders, but um, can have a family tree pattern. It, Possibly, it, 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 it appears that way, at least in some cases. And, and, and of course, remember this is a diagnosis that is based on symptomatology, so there is not all of that symptomatology doesn't it does not lead back to one sure. thing. Sure. And, and, and most and most likely is not going to. Um. I find that school teachers are pretty well educated. I on, think that is correct. Yes. Yeah, in helping these children. Yes. Um, and the problem is, is that because they run, not one size fits all. So right. some are actually able to incorporate into the regular classroom, and then others aren't, which is very difficult, isn't it? It is, and um, who that looks better for and who that works better for uh, can vary from, for, for lots, lots and lots of different, different reasons. Because autism is just one aspect of who that, 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 that communication piece is just one aspect of who that person is. Because the other thing that's coupled with that is what your actual um, intellectual potential is and that's separate <laughs> from being autistic um, and your, your your IQ or your intellectual potential is what your ability is to learn and, and I'm really dumbing this down a little bit but is is to learn um, is to learn academic knowledge right and so if you have a high potential to do that and you're autistic, you look different than if your potential to learn academic knowledge is right. Is it's not as it's not as high. Right. And so that that can make a difference too. And that needs to be identified. It does. Otherwise, it does. you're setting up a child for failure, and that's not good. Well, well, yeah, for frustration and for or frustration, for frustration. For, and, and 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 families and everybody else um, that's involved in taking care. Of, okay. So most of it still. It, with autism is a um, therapeutic intervention? Yes. Not so much a pharmacologic intervention? That is correct. Okay. And that's really important to know also because I've seen some children who are treated with medication for it. They're not, well, I have a lot of patients that I have that have autism that are on medication. For other things? For other things, um, but a lot of those other things are uh, related to them having autism. For example, one of the most common things um, that we treat children for with autism um, is sleep. Because like a lot of other developmental disabilities, um, and I, again, what's the right, developmental issues, th things, I, I don't like disability either exactly, but, but um, they have difficulty with sleep. And so you I've always approached my practice from if you don't sleep well, you don't do anything well, and so absolutely. <laughs> so you've got to get got to get back. Gotta so, re so that's yeah, reboot the brain exactly. And um, and well, and and if children don't sleep well, their parents don't sleep well, <laughs> and then that's a whole other problem. So, um, so that that's 
one of the more common things that children that have autism would receive something for. And not all of that is prescription medicine. I mean, there's, you know, melatonin. There's several things that are that are over the counter that I would, you know, that would, would be a pharmacological intervention. So that's one of the more common things. And then because of frustrations and um, uh, the folks that have autism have a real intolerance to change and routine and uh, things aren't quite like what they're supposed to be. Right. Um, if I was, I, I've been here and talked with you before, um, and if I came in and, um, I don't know, that there was a couch here rather than the chairs, well, it'd be kind of weird or different, but, but it wouldn't. You'd adapt. Would, I'd adapt. It wouldn't, you know. Um, but if I had autism, that, that be much more be difficult. Much more difficult. And so there's lot there's lots of things that that go along um, with that. And depending on what level of frustration and irritability and and things, we sometimes will. There, there are actually some medications that are approved to help with that irritability um, and that frustration tolerance. It doesn't change the autism, but it helps some of those symptoms that well, are sure. associated I with mean, that. I mean, and yeah, and if you're trying to do 20 hours of ABA therapy and the schedule doesn't allow for the therapy to be at one o'clock Tuesday mm -hmm. every week, right? that's gonna set Danny off. Right. And are you, you going can't to school, help that. Are you going to school, there's a substitute teacher, or, you know, it, we n normally go out on the playground at 10 o'clock, and, and it's raining today, so we can't go outside. Or there, I mean, there's just all sorts of um, things that can, can be problematic. It's a really interesting problem. It's a really interesting challenge. These are really, really special kids. They are very special kids, and great families, and it's a good, it's a good, a good, a good bunch of people to work with. It's amazing. I'm so glad you're here. Okay, so... There you have it, just touching the absolute top of autism. Um, it is a disorder of communication. We can treat it with therapy. Um, these are special kids with special challenges, but it's really, it's, I, I still think it's, it's like everything in life, it's a gift. <laughs> so if we would like, if we're concerned or we have friends and we'd like to make an appointment, how do we make an appointment? The first thing you need to do anytime you have a concern about your child's health is talk to your child's primary care physician. That's 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 your starting point, our primary care provider. That's your starting point for, for everything, and they can guide you in your area of the of the of the country on who's the best person to see. Um, we at um, Children's Hospital have um, a website that you can can get on and get to our practice and uh, fill out some paperwork and we can help determine if, if we're the best place for you or if we need to send you somewhere else in the community. That's great, thank you. So there you have it, Dr. Debbie Christensen talking about autism. Um, thank you so much for joining us today. Good to see you. Thank you, and that's a wrap. This episode of Doc Talk is brought to you by First Bank. We're not just your neighborhood bank, we're your neighbors. Our local team lives up to the name, putting our customers and community first. To experience First Bank difference, stop by any of our 13 Knoxville area locations or visit firstbankonline.com. First Bank, member FDIC.